Mathematics Advanced Subsidiary Level, Paper 1, 2022, Part 2. Question number 4. The quadratic equation, and then they give you the quadratic equation, has unequal, and I'm going to underline it, unequal real roots. Find the set of possible values of k. Now, this is also in the beginning of the syllabus or in my textbook, chapter 1, and you will find on page 30 and example 32 in my AS level, mathematics textbook will help you a lot. Let's just start. So, I'm going to say 2x squared minus 5x plus 8k squared, and that is equal to 0. Okay, now, this is nature of roots. So, the discriminant will be bigger than 0. If it's equal to 0, it's a tangent. If it's smaller than 0, it's non real roots. Okay, so please check there. You will find that uh, different values. I'm just, I'm just quickly going to see. There's a very nice summary sketch that I, that I want to, to show to you. So basically, um, that was on page 32. So if I'm, I'm just check quickly, um, 32, that was uh, 30. It was 30, not 32. Oh, page 29. Page 29. It's a very nice sketch showing you a tangent, showing you non-real roots to distinct uh, roots. Okay. So, basically, I'm just going to start working and say B squared, discriminant is 4AC is bigger than 0. Okay. Now, don't forget, this is A, this is B, and this, oh, sorry, the oh, graph always the sign is C. So, it's going to be negative 5, okay, let's just keep, change my pen, so it's going to be negative 5 squared minus 4, and the value of A is 2, and the value of C is 8k squared, and that's bigger than 0. So basically it's going to be 25, and if I multiply 4 to 8, then it's negative 64, k squared is bigger than 0. Okay, now this is a quadratic inequality. So what I, I always do is I solve it, do it on your paper, on the side. So I'm going to make the sketch. I'm going to say 25, you can do it in pencil, but just on the side, or you can, I think it's better due to this marker's line that we rather do it here. So I'm going to say 25 minus 64 k squared and that's equal to zero. I can even, to make it a little bit, I can just draw a line there so that I'm not getting in that space. Okay. So basically, now this is a So I'm going to solve this and make a sketch. So I put it equal to zero. Did you see that? And if I am going to, oh, I can work with plus minus. So I think because it's, there's not a middle term, I can basically just say 25. I can factorize it also. That's also a method. But I think it's it's easier if it's a, just like this. Then I divide 64, and I divide 64, and I get that k squared. And now you can just check before you go that you say 25 ABC 64 equals, and it's 25. Oh yes, now it's just going to be 25. Cannot simplify further. Then let's rather just do this. So if I want to then get k. Uh, why will I go so? So it's 25 over 64. Don't forget your plus minus. So therefore, k is equal to plus minus 5 over 8. Okay, so if I make a sketch now, it's going to be, now remember, because it was negative, the sketch, and this is very, very important, the sketch was like this. Did you see? Because it was negative 64k squared plus 25 equals 0. That was a negative in front of the x squared. Okay, so that this one is negative 5 over 8. This one is positive 5 over 8. But now I go to the inequality side because it's on this side. 
So it's bigger than zero. So I focus there. Now, if it's bigger than zero, it means above the x-axis. Okay, so it's describing the area above. If it's smaller than zero, it's below. So it's describing that area. So it's describing, and now I look, was there an equal sign? And I don't think I must actually do this. Don't, don't underline in your work. I'm going to just clean it. Okay, there was not an equal sign. Did you see that? So it's meaning that it was an open circle, an open, and you must now go and describe that part. So, so now I go back to my sketch and I say, therefore, and I say, okay, middle, so it's bigger than negative 5 over 8 and smaller than 5 over 8. And that will be my final answer. Okay, let's look at the examination report. Question number four. The majority of candidates were able to find the critical solutions, but did not apply discriminant bigger than zero. So you have to just memorize that pictures um, for distinct roots, equal roots, and non-real roots correctly. When an inequality results, into an answer between the two critical values, the answer must be written uh, must be written not as two separate inequalities. So meaning that if you get the middle part, you follow, we got not the sides, then it must be an and, it must be together. Okay, so that it meaning like this. Otherwise, if it was the two side parts, you can say this or this, but it should be written like this and no equal signs there. Very important. Question number five. In an arithmetic progression, the third term is 14. And I always like underlining. And the sum of the first eight terms is 148. Find the first term and the common difference. I think this is a very fair question. And I think it's really not that difficult. Okay. But if you want, you can, in the textbook, look on page 57. But I also want to show you that the formulas for sequences are also on the formulas sheet. So let's just go and find it. It's sum, the TN and sum. So let's see where will we find it. Okay. Seems to me almost, almost, almost. Okay. Oh, I think I passed it. Okay. So basically, look here, arithmetic. So if you look there... Okay, I like also to underline it. So there is Tn, okay? And this is the sum. So you can either say a half in A plus L, but I think it's we are going to work with this one so that we see the also the value of T in the equation. So we're rather going to focus. So please, if you if you could not recall it, go to your formula sheet and just get it from there. Okay. So let's just go back to the question. Okay. So I'm just checking question and I start. A very important, I didn't underline, it's an AP. Okay. So it's an AP. And I'm going to just write down the formula. So TN and that is going to be a plus, now I, I like to put the D at the back, so I like to just N minus 1 D. And then SN, I'm just going to say SN is N over 2, 2 A plus bracket N minus 1 D. Okay, so that is basic, but I actually prefer sometimes to put it in front, doesn't matter. So I'm going to start by saying the third term, so T3 is equal to 14. Okay, so I'm going to say 14 because that's the term. It's A plus and then it's 3 minus 1 and then I'm just writing D. And I can simplify this as 14 equals A plus 2D. Okay, and now this one I'm going to say this is the 8. So it's going to be S8. So I'm going to just say 148. 
And if you want and you don't want your things to get too look too messy, then what you can do is you can just draw a line there, okay, if you want on that side. So I'm going to say 148 equals, now n is 8, so it's 8 over 2, and then it's 2a plus bracket 8 minus 1, and then it is d, and close the bracket. So it's going to be 148 equals 4, 2a plus 7d. And I can even simplify it further um, by saying 148 is equal to 8a plus 28d. So this is going to be equation 1, and this is going to be equation 2. Okay, so basically, well, I'm just going to make space a little bit here. I'm going to just say, let's start with the equation. So let's just write down this one, and I'm going to here on the side because I'm going to multiply. So if it's 14 equals A plus 2D, this is now 1, and I have 148 equals 8A plus 28D. That's equation 2. Okay, so now one of the variables I must make the same. So I think we're going to make this first one uh, we're going to multiply with negative 8. Okay, so that it becomes the cancel the positive 8. So if I multiply that with negative 8, now this is why I was writing, so it's negative 1, 1, 2 equals negative 8a minus 16d. And then it's 1, 4, 8 equals 8a plus 28d. And then, okay, so if I, if I subtract, then I'm going to get 36, and that is going to be cancelling there, and then it's 12D. And then I divide 12, and I divide 12, and I get my first value, that D will be equal to 3. And now from there, it's very easy. I just use the first formula. So I'm just going to so substitute d is equal to 3 in equation 1. So then it is 14 equals a plus 2 and d3. And if I simplify this, it's going to be a plus 6. So a is going to be 14 minus 6. And the value of a is going to be 8. And that's going to be that. Uh, maybe we just, no, I, yeah, we can, no, but the exam reports are so short here, so I think let's do the next one. Um, it's not so much info. So if I look at this one, okay, where will I find this is infinity? So this will go with GP, so if you, you will also not find the formula on the formula sheet, so please, maybe the formula for um, it, it is to infinity. I can just check quickly if S to infinity is on the formula sheet. Because I'm going to use that. Okay, let's just see. Uh, geometrical. Yes, there it is. Okay, excellent. So you can, there, this. There is the infinity one. Okay. but So let's just go back. But first, we're just going to work with the sigma notation. Okay. So basically, we're just going to start with this one. So it is now infinity, and in is, uh, r is 3, and then it's 5 over 4, and then it's going to be 3, and then it's 1 minus r. Okay, so basically, it's going to be, okay, so let's just start. So it's 5 over 4. Now, first get three terms. That's what I'm basically doing. I don't have to, I don't want to do it like that. I'm finding, what I can do, rather, I'd rather do it like this, to make it a little bit ordered, not necessary. Term one, term two, term three. Okay, so that I can find the value of A and the value of R. So, for the first one, it's five over four, and then it's three, one minus three. And then it's, 5 over 4, and then it's 3, 1 minus 4. 
and then it's 5 over 4, and then it's 3, and it's 1 minus 5. 1, 2, 3. Okay, so it's 5 over 4, and then I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit long. I could have simplified this already, but just for the video, I like to be a little bit longer. But you can skip this step. Okay. Now you can even, as I said, I, I'm doing it now with fractions, but, but you can work with your ABC. But this is going to be 5 over 4 minus that 1 over 9 plus 5 over 4 multiply 1 over 27 plus 5 over 4 multiply 1 over 81 plus 1, 2, 3. Okay, so basically I'm going to get 5 over 36, that's my term A. I get 5 over 108. Use your ABC, please don't work in decimals. 5 over 324, just work with the, keep the vulgar fractions. Okay, so I'm getting, I'm getting that the value of A is 5 over 36. Very important. To get the value of R, you can either say 2, T2 divide T1, or you can say T3 divide T2. Okay, and, and I, you can just check. It's actually the same. If you're going to take 5 over 108, and you divide it by 5 over 36, that must be equal to 5 over 3, 2, 4. Okay, as I said, you don't have to do both. 5 over 108, but the value of R is just a third. That is what I'm looking for. And now I can go to my infinity formula. So S to infinity from my formula sheet is A1 minus R. So what's the value of A? It's 5 over 36. And then what is the value of R? So it's 1 minus a third. And if I go and if I simplify and keep with your ABCs, keep with your fractions, and it's 5 over 24. And that is your final answer. Let's just go to the exam report and see what they tell us. Okay. Uh, I think it's back. Question 5. It's fairly well answered. Okay. Although formula are given at the formula sheet, some candidates did not use them and carelessly expansion of brackets resulted in wrong answers. So some okay, this was in A. That A, as I said, they worked out they worked out term one, two, three, four, up to eight, and no, it's too much. Don't do that. It's unnecessary and you can, um, time and you can make unnecessary mistakes. And then question B, there's no infinity. Some learners did not realize to start with R is equal to 3. Okay, why? Because it stands underneath the, in the, um, the sigma notation. So then R is 4, but overall well answered. Common wrong answer seen due to wrong calculation um, um, usage was 5 over 54. Okay, but here is the answer. A is 8, D is 3, and then it was 5 over 24. There they also said that to you. As your final exams approach, I want to highlight the importance of the Y equals MX plus C mathematics textbooks. If you don't have them yet, you can find them at the following bookshops. These textbooks will be your reliable study companions, guiding you towards mathematical success. For educators aiming for exceptional maths exam results, start using the Y equals MX plus C mathematics textbooks used by leading schools in your classroom. They are part of the NEET catalogue and can be easily obtained within your ministry's textbook budget. Make sure to communicate your request to your region's procurement department to empower your learners with the best educational resources. Furthermore, schools have the option to place direct orders with us and we offer bulk order discounts. Reach out to us via email at the address below. Best of luck in your maths journey.